Cardinal fans, welcome to this uh, week's edition of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And like always, I've got Coach Cruzy here with us, and we took a big trip out to Colorado mm -hmm. and came back, and I didn't get any sleep. And I tell you what, I was <laughs> haggard by the time we got home Saturday night. I know I don't know how you guys you felt. You guys made that same day trip. When we you made the same Saturday day. morning, flew back Saturday night. And, yeah, it was a red eye, night. that's yep. for sure. Changed time zones twice. And, you know, yep. funny game. Yeah, I really mean it's the first half, and we're going to have Coach Williams on mm -hmm. later on the show, but I thought your defensive game plan was excellent mm -hmm. against a very good, and I want Cardinal fans to understand, most of the time, Colorado School of Mines are in the NCAA Division II playoffs. They're a good football team. They average 90 to 100 plays a game. I mean, it's, it's just run and go, run and go, and boy, your kids did a great job. You know, I, I think if you take the last five years and did com combined offensive statistics, they'd probably be the top team in the country over mm -hmm. the last five years right. consistently, you know, maybe even going back further than that. You know, they know how to get it done offensively. They, coach Ditz got it down to a science mm -hmm. and super, super intelligent Very coach. Very comfortable and, with it. And uh, the players play in the scheme well. You know, those guys are all you know, red shirt junior, or four year juniors and five year seniors, so they've been in the program for a long time and and they execute well, and they've seen about every look under the sun versus what they do, and they adjust well, and, and all of those things. You know, that being said, we were everything that they wanted uh, for about, you know, the first 37 minutes or so of that game. Um, you know, at halftime, they were a little bit beside themselves because they, they, they aren't used to being defended like that. You know, in the first week, they played uh, South Dakota Mines and right. scored 49 points, maybe something like that, didn't punt. And, uh, you know, we... We actually made them punt several times in the first half, which they're not accustomed to. So, right. you know, they were a little off kilter there for a while, and and uh, you, you know, attribute that to to uh, you know some of the things we did in, in our players' execution, and and uh, you know it was it was a good start to the game. You know, I think all anybody that's ever coached football agrees with Andy Reid's uh, point about next man up. And yep. Coach, I've heard you ever since I started working with you for the last four or five years. Uh, I know that's your philosophy, yeah. and we did have some injuries. Mm -hmm. But but the game of football, you're going to have right. injuries. It yep. doesn't make any difference what team you're coaching at what level. Yep. Uh, and I thought really that a lot of the kids got an opportunity to come in and play, just like the other day when we beat Southwest Baptist and you played mm -hmm. ten guys in the secondary. I yep. thought there was a lot of guys that really rose up and did a pretty good we, job. It was a, you know we're just going each game is the next position. When we played right. every linebacker we had on Saturday, and the week before we played every DB we had. And, and, uh, you know, credit to those guys and, and our coaching staff, you know, to have those guys prepared to step into those situations. And uh, we've done an, a, a pretty good job of that the last couple of days. As you go back through the film, there's always things you're going to find that, that you need to do better. And, uh, but, you know, playing as many players as we played in the first couple of games here, uh, you know, realistically should help us down the stretch in the season that we have more players to draw from. And, you know, we got a little beat up. Um, in the first couple of weeks with, with some of the cramping stuff as hot as it was week one and then, you know, had a few guys get beat up on Saturday too and, and uh, you know, got to get the next guy in there and get them ready to go. And I think you do a great job of that. I really do. I, I, you know, I've seen you grow in the depth in the program because now we got kids that are really sophomores and really juniors that mm -hmm. are getting the yeah. opportunity to play. And they're really doing a nice job when they get in, uh, especially teams. And I, I wanted to go over that a little bit. I. You know, I, I've always thought that's been one of your strengths. We've talked about sometimes if you're outgunned, the one third of the of the game yep. that you got to control, especially teams. And I think your coaching staff does an extremely good job. How did you feel overall? Because we won the uh, yeah. first ball game on a special right. team play. Right. How did you feel about special teams this week? I think they were solid. Uh, we were we were dominant week one. Yeah, we uh, were. We were dominant on special teams week one. You out coached them it, on week one. Well, you know, that's we, we had executed them on the field and, and uh, we had some good schemes going into it. But, uh, you know, I thought we were good on special teams on Saturday, but we've got to be a lot better. You know, we set the bar pretty high week one and I don't think we, we got back to that same level. We were still at a good level, probably a winning uh, level, but we didn't, you know, we've got to be able to to uh, change games in the special teams area, and I'm not sure we did that on Saturday. We, we left some plays out on the right. field. And, and you uh, can't do that. Yeah, you, you can't, you know, for us right now, for where we're at as a program and in this transition and all those things, we've got to have every, we've got to make those plays. And uh, we've got to, you know, when we get opportunities in special teams, we've got to take advantage of them. And I think we did it to some level on Saturday, but again, we you know, as we told them after week one, uh, we're going through the special teams. Coach Williams is going through punt block and return, and Coach Gallagher is going right. through kickoff, kickoff return, and I'm going through punt, and we're looking at some different things, and we're saying, all right, 
this is what you put on film. This is what you proved the level that we're going to play special teams. Now you got to match it and exceed it every week. And and uh, you know, so we've got to continue to work hard at that. Yeah, uh, offensively, mm -hmm. we did play three quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, it was a given. Uh, matter of fact, uh, one of my buddies uh, list, uh, saw the yeah. game on the internet and he he, he called and says yeah. we always rotate three guys in like that. And I said, yeah, I can't really tell you. Yeah, you know, I really and I really don't know. You know. Coaches make decisions, yep. and I said, I, I don't really put Jared on the spot, yeah. but we did play yeah. three quarterbacks. We did, you know, and it's one of those things that you're trying to find a guy in, in a situation that, that's going to go make plays for you and who has the hot hand, and, and we, were, we were searching a little bit for that on Saturday. Um, you know, none of them played really, really bad. None of them played really, really good. Right now, you know, we're trying to figure out that situation a little bit, and, you know, DJ's done some good things for us over the last couple of years, obviously, and and, uh, you know, if he was sitting here, he'd probably tell you there's a lot of plays he'd like to have back in the first half. And, and uh, you know, we were in a situation we, we knew we had to continue to make plays against that team and find a way to make plays against that team. And, and uh, so we looked at a couple of different options there. And, and uh, you know, we'll see how it goes going forward. You know, DJ's the guy who's got the most experience, but we, we know we've got some talented guys uh, in, that, in that position group in that room as well. And, and we're going to find the best guy for the job. And, right. and the good thing is about, and you know this, in, in our game, you know, competition makes us all better. Oh, absolutely. When, when you have competitors, and I think all three of those guys that we played on Saturday will compete. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a good plan for this coming week, and, and uh, the, the best guy is going to play. Well, you know, I, I said this to you after the game, and I hope this is not putting you on the spot either, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like you have more bullets in the gun around the quarterback than you've had in the past. I think at your receiver mm -hmm. position and your running back positions, you have guys that could make plays. A absolutely. And uh, I, I think they're a good compliment. Why don't you talk on a positive side, talk yeah. a little bit about that, because I think we both agree. You know, I think we're, we've done a nice job in the offseason, uh, both offensively, defensively, and special teams of of working our schemes and putting ourselves in the right schemes to take advantage of the athletes we have on our roster. And uh, we're doing that, you know, you're seeing a lot of that on defense right now, some right. of the fruits of that labor and, and uh, guys going out there and making impressive plays and rushing the passer and, and just the, the sheer speed that's on the field. You know, you see it offensively as well. You just alluded to it with the guys that, that we've been able to put around the quarterback now. And, and you know, as we talk to the quarterbacks, hey, you know, we're no longer asking you to make every play. We're just asking you to get the ball in, in the hands of the guys, you know, and, and take your opportunities when they come. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, that's a place where maybe we haven't been before. Right. And, you know, so credit to our coaching staff and those guys, you know, sitting down and, and us getting together and putting those schemes together that can highlight those things. Uh, so right now, you know, this week going forward, we've got to continue on that track and, and make sure we're getting the, the ball to the right guys. You bet. Uh, in the last segment, we'll talk a little bit about Valparaiso, but mm -hmm. but I want to talk a little bit about the conference. Mm -hmm. I, now that I'm tied up with right. you, I, I'm going to watch the papers and, yep. and get on the Internet and watch all the stuff, uh -huh. so I'm prepared to talk about yeah. it and something like this. But you look at the league, uh, Coach, I really mean this. I think we have an opportunity to be a player in the league. You uh, know, we, we saw some of the scores this weekend, yeah. and, and some of the people beat this person, that person, mm -hmm. which means nothing on You're any right. given Saturday. Exactly. It's all about matchups. It's matchups. Well, but I know. think you have a real opportunity with this club. Well, I'd like to think so. You know, as we talk to our team on, on Sunday, you know, in kind of the postmortem after the game and talking to them about the things from, from Saturday's game, and, and uh, that was our message to them as well. Listen. You know, we hit a bump on the road here against a really good football team on the road where we didn't execute very well in some things. And, uh, but that doesn't change our goals at this point. You know, we still have everything that we've set out oh, to absolutely. do in front of us. And the league's wide open right now um, from what I've seen as well. And you, you probably have seen more of the scores than I have. But I think there's them. only one team in the league that's undefeated right now. That's correct. And, uh, you know, that's a team that we, we lost to on the road in overtime last year and, and feel like we can compete with too. So... You know, you know, we got a lot of football yet to play, uh, but if we can go out and take care of our business each week, um, I like what our future could be. Well, that ought to end this segment. Uh, we'll get back with Coach and talk a little bit later, uh, but we're going to have Coach Williams come in and talk about his defense in the next segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Cardinals, welcome back to the second segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. It's my pleasure to have our defensive coordinator here, Coach Williams. And Coach, uh, 
I really mean this first half. You got you're playing against a team who runs ninety to hundred every game, mm -hmm. and so it's go 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 go. So your kids really have to be extremely well prepared. I thought the first half that game plan you put together was outstanding. How did you feel about your defense first half? Uh, you know, the first half I thought we played absolutely dominant, and um, that's when we were still healthy, and uh, before we lost some key guys, and and we were still a little bit fresh, and we we really played extremely well, extremely hard. You know, a bit one of the big things we talked about with an offense that you see that plays so many plays, and they're so well at moving the chains is we, the three biggest things we said that you have to do to kind of slow them down is you have to when they're going to throw the ball and sling it back there, you have to hit the quarterback get sacks, get negative plays, stuff like that that breaks up the rhythm. And then when you get them to third and fourth down or when they get into the red zone, you have to shut them down. You have to shut them down. And if you look in that first half, how we came, we went into halftime, you know, winning 75% of the third and fourth downs. Right, you, you see them getting into the red zone, and we knew they were a team that did not like to kick field goals. They never kick field goals. They all, always want to go for it on fourth down right. in the red zone. And we got them down there to the fourth and six inches mm -hmm. and and tackled them for a loss and kept them out and uh, and and, tur and turned them away again another time on fourth down in the red zone and if you notice the next couple of times they got down there to fourth down in the red zone they kicked field goals which right. is not what they want to do and so they they fought extremely hard and they did the things that we asked them to do you know there you know for really two and a half quarters um, not that they didn't fight hard the whole game but when you look at it Halfway through the court, for, uh, the third quarter, it's 15 to nothing, and right. and really we're giving them everything they want, and some uh, you know a lot of you know guys go down at that point in time, and and some other things go a different way, and then they unfortunately score 30 there in the last you know probably 15, 16 yeah, minutes you know, of the game. Yeah, football's a game. So. Where, you know, when it rains, it pours. We both mm -hmm. been. I was defensive coordinator, as you well know, my whole career, just mm -hmm. about, and you're in the same boat I am. Mm -hmm. We were defensive guys. I, I get it. Hey, one area that's positive, I really want to talk about. And I really mean this. You know, I've talked to all the kids when the coaches aren't around. They enjoy playing in your scheme. Uh, what are some things you're doing different? Because they really come up and say, Coach, I'm having fun. This is a good time. <laughs> we're second mm -hmm. right now, Coach, and I'm sure you're aware of this. We're second in sacks in the league. Mm -hmm. And, we're, you know, that, that's, that's a, a good sign. It means kids are having fun and running into the ball. You know, the biggest thing is, you know, and a lot of those guys know that a lot of the things that we're doing this year are, are the same things or the best of what we did last year. Right. You know, some of the things that didn't work as well or we didn't understand as well or didn't feel as comfortable with, you know, we've, we've set aside. But the things that we're doing right now is you can look back as, you know, that's, that's what we've done. One of the big things I think we've done is, like you said, was, you know, this defense, you know, we need to, we need to put pressure on the passer. We need to do. We need to do that, and that was a big point of emphasis this this off season. So it's been as much about finding atypical bodies or guys that within the program that can do those things, or yeah, we right. think can maybe do those Fit those special things. You know, don't don't necessarily have to be the biggest guys in the world, but guys that have you know phenomenal speed and burst and have the uh, athletic ability and the want to to rush the passer and do those type of things and kind of ask them to do some really simple things but allow those guys to get a chance to do a lot of different things you know guys guys get a chance to pass rush but then they get a chance to drop into coverage and then they get a chance to do some of those things so they feel they feel like you know like they're getting a chance to do a lot of different things and getting a chance to, to make a lot of different plays they're not just kind of just right. Just doing one simple thing all game long, and they're really just a decoy or whatever. They're a guy that literally feels that every single play, the defense is designed for them, each one of them, to make a huge play. And so it makes them that much more amped up and ready to go every single play because they say, hey, this could be my play, this could be my play. Right, exactly. And they make that play. They, feel that way, they make that play, and they get addicted to it. And they say, well, I want to I oh, do it again thought, the next play. Come on, you know, you see, it's again. fun when you see them battling with each other. They come over to the sideline right now, and they're, they're, you know they're bought in when they're trying to tell me, hey, hey, I think we could come to this right now because this guy is – he he's set up for this, or he can't handle this. So hey, can maybe maybe get this well, call in there? The you know, so understanding the scheme, and they're aggressively wanting to attack and go make those plays, and those are the fun things when they're clamoring for it. Well, now this week we got Valpo, which is a whole different mm -hmm. look um, approach. Uh, I know you're going to have to take mm -hmm. a little bit of different approach because they'll huddle, mm -hmm. uh, and they'll be a little bit more conventional. I right. guess that's probably the best term. Right. And but, I, I know you're not going to give away the game plan, but it, it'll be a different mm -hmm. look for you. It will be a different look for us, which is good. Now, it's not something that we haven't seen before and our guys haven't seen before from practice and other things. And so we'll be ready for it. 
Um, you know, again, like I said, I, I, with what we've seen the first two weeks um, and what we see from our offense and practice every day, the fact of just seeing a, a huddle and actually having yeah, to get in, a, uh, get in a huddle and call a play and say ready Absolutely. break is going to be odd uh, for, for our guys this week in practice and in the game. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it's really football is football. And um, these guys are flying around and making plays right now and doing the things. And we know that uh, we're, we've shown glimpses of being a dominant defense. And we hope this week versus a, a talented Division I opponent to get a big stage in front of our home crowd to really show the dominance and the greatness of our defense and of, of this team this year. Well, Coach, you've done a great job. Like I told you, I've talked to the kids when the coaches aren't around and they're enjoying playing in your defense. Good luck this week. I know we'll see a different look. And for all the people, come, be sure to come out. Like I said, uh, next seven will be one of the kids that I think Coach has done a real good job with who's now playing outside linebacker, Jimmy DeStefano, who had a great game, Coach. I think you'll mm -hmm. agree. And hopefully everybody uh, will be here on uh, at 1 o'clock on Saturday to watch us play Valpo. Coach, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Cardinal fans, welcome back to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, another segment. And this is always my favorite every week when we get an opportunity to talk to the players. And One of my favorite defensive players is uh, Jimmy DeStefano, uh, who's now playing outside linebacker. Jimmy, good to have you on the show today. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about the new schemes we have. You know, we It seems like we're playing two down linemen. Everybody else is a linebacker yeah. running to the ball. Why don't you talk a little bit about what Coach Williams have you guys doing uh, here uh, this fall? Uh, I mean... With this new kind of scheme, Coach Williams and the rest, and co the rest of the coaching staff put up, it's it's more of like an attack defense, you know, mm -hmm. and we all run the ball, and it kind of just lets the D-line get after the quarterback. It lets us run the ball, like I said, and just play football. Yeah. Not really worry about the mental aspects aspects too much. Just well, let me ask you this. Let's me, let me ask you this. You know, you were basically, when you first came as a freshman and got an opportunity to play, you were playing inside. Yeah. You just seemed so much natural, much yeah. more comfortable on the outside. Why don't you talk just for you uh, yeah. as far as playing outside linebacker? Well, if when you're on the outside, you obviously get more opportunity to rush the passer, blitz, and all that stuff. And as well as just find ball, see ball, get ball, you know. You yeah. don't really have to worry about, like, Closing the middle of the field and all that stuff. It's more of just a read and react kind of thing. You made a great interception. You want to talk about that a little uh, bit? I mean, first first <laughs> possession they had. Uh, we know about their offense, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, Colorado School of Mines is one of the perennial Division yeah, two teams that make the playoffs. And uh, they know huddle. They run anywhere from 90 to 100 plays every ball game. But you guys came out, and I thought you had an excellent game plan for the first half. Yeah. In the very first series, you got, a, got your first pick of the year. I mean, yeah, the credits to the D-line. They got to the quarterback, kind of whacked his arm a little bit, it looked like. And then the ball kind of just flew out on like a little dump-off screen deal, mm -hmm. shovel pass. And I was in the right spot at the right time, so it worked out well. Yeah, I, I tell you, you were all over that. Why don't you talk about some of the other guys now? I know that we got a few. Swoboda got hurt yeah. a little bit, and uh, we don't know when he'll be back. But uh, talk about some of your teammates on the yeah. defensive side, some of the guys have been playing well for the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. I mean, our D-line has been doing tremendous. I mean, I think we're second in the conference in sacks and probably first in quarterback hits. So they've been doing great. I mean, our coverage has been solid. Second to the receiver as well, and well, you know, again, of course, you play four or five guys. Mm -hmm. If you guys go nickel some and uh, dime some in the secondary, but really, it looks to me like we're we're really starting to uh -huh. recruit, recruit a lot of linebackers uh -huh. that can run and we yeah. end up playing defensive end and not really down defensive ends, but up defensive yeah. ends. Uh, that's got to be more fun for you guys to run as far as uh, yeah, because you're coming from different directions yeah, yeah, all the yeah. time. It kind of keeps the offense guessing. You know, you, they never know what to expect with a different blitz patterns we have and all that, so it just keeps them on their toes and lets us have fun. Well, real quickly, you know, uh, this week we've got Valparaiso here at 1 o'clock, and uh, hopefully a lot of the Cardinal fans will be there to support you guys. You're 1-1. One one. Uh, do, what, what do you know about Valparaiso from a defensive standpoint as far as when you're looking at their offense? Um, I mean, we're kind of expecting the same kind of thing from last year, kind of more of a traditional offense, kind of uh -huh. more of a running team instead of kind of comparing to Colorado Mines, not really spreading us out too much, I don't think, so. We're just going to do what we do, play yeah. football. Well, that's, that, that's exactly what you have to do. You yeah. know, you go get, uh, talking about the conference a little bit, too. I always like to talk to everybody. DJ, I talked to him last mm -hmm. week about the conference. Uh, I think we have a real shot to be competitive in that. You know, you, yeah. you go down and look at the, the people that we're playing, and I've been comparing scores, you mm -hmm. know, the first two ball games. Uh, I think we're right there. You know, Southwest Baptist, Southwest Baptist won. Uh, uh, Lincoln lost the other day, other day, so I think there's an opportunity there for the Cardinals to be yeah. very competitive and be a factor in the conference race. How yeah. do you feel about that? I mean, that? we just got to keep getting better on and off the field every day and get, just getting better. 
something every day, you know. You bet. And working toward that aspect. Of well, you talked to the crew real quickly a little bit, a little bit about injuries, but you and I both know it's the next man up. Yeah, that's next man, man up. That's right. It doesn't make a difference. You're playing yeah. pop horn, uh, high right. school football, you, which you did in St. Louis, or playing mm -hmm. college football. You got to be ready to go. Well, Jimmy, you know, uh, like I said, I'm one of your biggest fans. I love the move for you to play an outside linebacker because you love yeah. You can tell when it's your time to come on the outside, you enjoy that. Thank you. So good luck this week. Keep Appreciate pressing it. the quarterback because, like you said, you're one of the top teams in the conference with that. Stay with it, and good luck against Valparaiso this Saturday. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Next, we'll be back with Coach Cruzy and talk a little bit about this Saturday. This is our last segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook, and I just want to remind all Cardinal fans, be sure to be here and support a fun team to watch this year. we got a lot of go, 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 both on offense and defense. we got Valpo coming in at 1 o'clock here at home. Coach, on Saturday, I want you to real quickly talk about Valpo. I know you're not yeah. going to let any cats yeah, out of the bag. Yeah, well, you know, it's early in the week. Yeah. The cat's probably not in the bag okay, yet. Okay, yeah, but, true. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a big game for us. I, th I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, I believe this is the first time, I know in football, the first time an NCAA Division I school has played at William Jewell. So it's kind of a historic game, and, and you know, we went to their place last year, and, and it was a hard-fought game, and we got, a, we got a nice win to bring home with us. And So they're going to have a lot of uh, you know, motivation coming in here trying to do the same thing to us. And um, you know, they're, good, they're a good football team. They're well-coached, got a new coaching staff, uh, came over from a lot of them are from the Lehigh staff, and you know, they're doing some good things in all phases right now. And, It'll be a challenge for us. You know, they're, they played some good teams to start the year in FCS school week one, and then St. Joseph's, who's in our conference week two. Uh, and, you know, they haven't got a win yet, but they had a bye week last week, so they're going to come in healthy and ready to go. You bet. Well, again, Cardinal fans, we hope to see all of you there. Uh, the second home uh, game of the year, and uh, really, they're an exciting team to watch, and we hope to see everybody at 1 o'clock this coming Saturday against Valpo.